Hey guys, it's just you and me again, and a few good men. Oh, I did not plan for this <laughs> to rhyme, actually, but I am a rhyming prodigy. Um, anyway, um, it's that movie has been on my list for quite a while, and I have heard... I've seen you guys recommend it quite a lot so I'm very excited to watch it I know it has Tom Cruise in it um but I don't know anything else about it like I literally don't know what it's about I don't know what the premises of it are like I don't know if it's um I have absolutely no idea about the storyline or anything. Like, I'm going in completely blind and the title is not helping. Like, it's just a few good men. You you know, it could be anything. It could be about the army. It could be about... Um, I don't know. Who else is good? Doctors? <laughs> Although I doubt Tom Cruise plays a doctor, but I don't know. I haven't seen everything under the sun yet. But, um, yeah, sounds good, title so far, um, and it's from 1992, I think, yeah, I think, um, that's, that's all I know, so, yeah, I hope you enjoy this blind reaction, I mean, that's n not what it is, is it, because I'm not blind, but it is blind in terms of that I have no idea what's happening, but I will, because I'm not blind, Anyway, I'm dragging this on. <laughs> um, yeah, if you'd like to see the full blind reaction, you can check out my Patreon from the link in the description. And also for early access to my videos here on YouTube, you can become a member on YouTube and from Instagram, OnlyFans, Twitter, and TikTok. Check all the links down below. And if you want to drop me a text, I always respond on my OnlyFans. I will be there and you can chat with me if you're interested in that and also you get some pretty cool content as well it's pretty cool i promise check it out um and on my instagram and tiktok i kind of post different stuff which again i love and i enjoy doing and i would really appreciate your support so if you want to check out more of me everything is down there just scroll a little bit to the down and you will find it Anyway, let's go. No. Are they gonna beat him up? Oh no, what are they doing? These are not a few good men right there. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Commander Galloway. I'm here to see Captain West. Oh, go right in, Commander. They're expecting you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Joe, come on in. Thank you, sir. Captain West, this is Lieutenant Commander Galloway. These uniforms Those are so Commander cool. Lewis. Yes, sir. Dawson and Downey are both recruiting poster Marines. And Santiago was known to be a screw-up. I was thinking it sounded an awful lot like a code red. Someone who possesses not only the legal skill, but a familiarity with the inner workings of the military. In short, Captain, I'd like to suggest that I be the one who that... Commander, I'd like you to leave the room so we can talk about you behind your back. Certainly, sir. What? <laughs> I thought this cum red shit wasn't going on anymore. With the Marines at Gitmo, who knows what the hell what goes on this? down there. Well, we better find out before the rest of the world does. Damn thing could get messy. Well, from what I understand from your colleagues, you're much too valuable in your present assignment to be wasted on what I'm sure will boil down to a five-minute plea bargain and a week's worth of paperwork. Sir, I think there might be more involved than that. Don't worry about it. I promise you, Division will sign the right man for the job. All right, let's go. Let's get to. Oh. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. A Marine corporal named Dawson illegally fires a round from his weapon over the fence line and into Cuban territory. What's a fence line? Sam? A big wall separating the good guys from the bad. Isn't he supposed to know that? Teacher's pet toxin. He poisoned the rag? Not according to them. What do they say? Not much. They're being flown up here tomorrow, and on Wednesday at 0600, you'll catch a transport down to Cuba for the day to find out what you can. Meantime, go and see Lieutenant Commander Joanne Galloway. You're the attorney division assigned? I'm lead counsel to Sam Weinberg. I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. <laughs> Come in, please, have a seat. Oh, uh, this is, uh... 
I forgot his name already. More. More. The one I can't pronounce. He successfully plea bargained 44 cases in nine months. One more, I get a Damn. set of steak knives. Okay, never mind. Have you ever been in a courtroom? I once had my driver's license suspended. Dawson's family's been contacted. But that's his the specialty. He doesn't let Jenny things Miller, get to court. Side. That's like she the best lawyer yet. there is. Would you like is. me to take care of that? Sure. Maybe. Maybe. Lieutenant, this letter makes it look like your client had a motive to kill Santiago. Gotcha. And Santiago is who? The victim. Right oh, my God. Am I correct in assuming that these letters don't paint a flattering picture of Marine Corps life at Guantanamo Bay? Yes, I'm among... further right in assuming that a protracted investigation of this incident. I'm writing to inform you of my problems with my unit here in Cuba and to ask for your help. I've fallen out on runs before for several reasons, such as feeling dizzy or nauseated. But on May 18th, I've fallen back about 20 or 30 yards, going down a rocky, unstable hill. My sergeant Damn. grabbed me and pushed me down the hill. Well, apparently, he's not very happy down here at Shangri La because he's written letters to everybody but Santa Claus asking for a transfer. And now he's telling tales about a fence line shooting. Matthew? I'm, I'm a pole, sir. I want to know what we're going to do about this. I think Santiago should be transferred off the base immediately. He's that bad, huh? Not only that, but where of this letter's bound to get out, he's going to get his ass whipped. Hmm. Transfer Santiago. Who is yes. he? Let's transfer the whole squad off the base. Let's, on second thought, windward. Let's transfer the whole windward division off the base. Santiago stays where he is. We're going to train the lad. John, <coughs> you're in charge. <coughs> You're going to train Santiago him, all right? Santiago doesn't make 4646 on his next proficiency in conduct report. And I'm going to blame you. Then I'm going to kill you. We go back a while. We went to the academy together. We were commissioned together. We did our tours in Vietnam together. If that's a source of tension or embarrassment for you, I don't give a shit. We're in the business of saving lives, Lieutenant Colonel Markinson. Santiago died at 1 a.m. At 3, the doctor wasn't able to determine the cause of death. Two hours later, he said it was poison. Oh, now I see what you're saying. It had to be Professor Plum in the library with the candlestick. I'm going to talk to your supervisor. OK, go straight up Pennsylvania Avenue. It's the big white house. With the you know what a code red is? I think I'm going to side with him on this one. I don't know what a code what a red pity. is. What is a code red? No, no, she knows something we don't. Because she picked up on that case. Sir, a code red is a disciplinary engagement. What's that mean exactly? Sir, a Marine falls out of line. It's up to the men in his unit to get him back on track. What's a garden variety code red? Was the attack on Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. So they didn't mean to kill him, but they did. Sir, PFC Downing will answer any direct questions you ask him. Swell. Swell. We uh, saw blood dripping down his mouth, and we pulled the tape off, and there was blood all down his face, sir. That's when Lance Corporal Dawson called the ambulance. Did anyone see you call the ambulance? Were I think there, there was the something wrong with the guy, yes, because sir, he was like... Arrest. Lance Corporal, the night of August 2nd, did you fire a shot across the fence line into Cuba? Did you assault Santiago with the intent of killing him? No, sir. What was your intent? To train him, sir. Train him to do what? Train him to think of his unit before himself. To respect the code. What's the code? You unit just core God country. I beg your pardon? I'm the only friend you've got. I'm gonna give you the 12 years. Before you go getting yourself into trouble tomorrow, I think you should know. The platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, held a meeting with the men and... I'll talk to you when I get back. No, he's a good lawyer. He's a good damn lawyer. I, I know it. He's too smart. He likes playing it light. You don't need a drink or play softball with. Commander, Listen, what I came to make peace. Got off on the wrong foot. What do you say, friends? And she's starting to recognize way, it, too, that he's a good lawyer. Kid, Kathy, Jack Ross came to see me today. You offered me the 12 years. Oh, that's what you wanted, right? I know, and I'll... I mean, I guess... Fight. 
Danny, take the 12 years. It's a gift. You don't believe their story, do you? You think they ought to go to jail for the rest of their lives? I believe every word of their story, and I think they ought to go to jail for the rest of their lives. He said the platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, had a meeting with the men and specifically told them not to touch Santiago. So? I never mentioned Kendrick. I don't even know who he is. I'll we'll see you go tomorrow. and meet him then. Although I'm not sure where that will lead to, but... That tape looks a little too clean, you know? I don't know a poison that does this. Sam, we should make sure somebody gets this to his parents. We don't need it. Aww. Kendrick, may I call you John? No, you may not. <laughs> of course Is not. To offend you? No, I like all you Navy boys. Every time we gotta go someplace to fight, he is dead because he had no honor. And God was watching. Sounds like he had theory? some motives. Sounds good. Let's move on. Are you planning on doing any investigating or are you just gonna take the guided tour? I'm pacing myself. We agreed that for his own safety, Santiago should be transferred off the base. Santiago was set to be transferred. On the first available flight to the States, 0600 the next morning. Five hours too late, as it turned out. Yeah. See? The man was dead. Let's go. I'm just wondering if you've ever. Shut heard up the term and sit red. down! I've heard the term, yes. This past February, Colonel, you received a cautionary memo from the Commander in Chief of the Atlantic Fleet. Warning that the practice of enlisted men disciplining their own wasn't to be condoned by officers. We're out of here. Thank you. My point is that I think Code Red still go on down here. Do Code Red still happen on this base, Colonel? Joe, the Colonel doesn't need to answer that. Yes, he does. No, he really doesn't. Yeah, he really does. Maybe he's just being careful Colonel. because these guys are crazy. You know, <laughs> maybe that's why. He just hit me. You want to ask me about code reds on the record, I tell you I discourage the practice in accordance with the commander's directive. Off the record, I tell you it is a You want to investigate me, roll the dice and take your chances. I eat breakfast 300 yards from 4,000 Cubans who are trained to kill me, so don't think for one second that you can come down here, flash a badge, and make me nervous. Santiago's transport. You guys have paperwork on that kind of thing. I, I just need it for the file. Was that an act? For the file. Yeah. Because this is the integral part of the you information. Have a they... copy of the transfer order for the file, Danny. I'm here to help in any way I can. Thank you. What I do want is for you to stand there in that faggoty white uniform and with your Harvard mouth extend me some fucking courtesy. No problem. He's just stomping on them both. And he was compliant with him up until... Because she was asking too many questions. So he started being rude to her. But then he was being compliant. He was telling her to shut up, right? And they didn't say anything. But then he asked for a copy of the order. A little sussy that that's when he starts... Fl uh, flashing his authority, you know? Markinson's gone UA. Unauthorized absence. I know what it means. When? This afternoon, sometime after we left. That's right. She said she feels like she's known me for years, so I suggested that she might feel more comfortable if I were directly involved with the case. She had Loudon sign the papers about an hour ago. Wow. I mean, I at a girl. It's way too much to hope that you're making this up just to bother me. Don't worry, I'm not going to make a motion for separation. You're still lead counsel. They're gonna Splendid. work together. I think and then they're gonna kiss. Code red and so do you. <laughs> I already know what's gonna happen. Let's go. You heard what I said. Did Lieutenant Kendrick order you guys to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Did he? Ooh. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. You mind telling me why the hell you? There was a platoon meeting on September 6th at four in the afternoon. 
Lieutenant Kendrick says that he gave strict instructions that nothing was to happen to Santiago. Now, is this true? Lieutenant Kendrick came to our room, ma'am. When? About five minutes after the meeting broke, sir. About 1620. And what happened then? Lieutenant Kendrick ordered us to give Santiago a code red. Jack! Jack! They were given an order. How long have you known about the order? Jack did know about the order, because if he did and he hadn't told us, Jack knows he'd be violating about 14 articles of the Code of Ethics. As it is, Jack's got enough to worry about. God forbid our clients decide to plead not guilty and testify for the record that they were given an order. Kendrick specifically told those men not to touch Santiago. That's right. And then he went into Dawson Downey's room and specifically told him to give him a Code Red. That's not what Kendrick said. Kendrick's you know what Markinson did for the first 17 of his 26 years in the Corps? Counterintelligence. Markinson's gone. There is no Markinson. Look, Danny. I'll knock it all down to involuntary manslaughter, two years or home in six months. No deal, we're going to court. Joe. No, you're not. Why not? Because you'll lose. And Danny knows it. Why not? Because you'll That's lose. That's nothing! And Danny knows it. You should take Danny that. that. I mean, as much as I am for, like, yeah, they're the innocent, the like, you know, they shouldn't the serve any time, but, like, that's conduct, nothing. Unbecoming. They're and military people. The They'll be out. fine yeah, in jail. In a courtroom, he loses this case. <laughs> See, Danny is an awfully talent. We did our job, and if that has consequences, then I'll accept them. And I won't say that I'm guilty, sir. Did you? Did you? Now you're asking us to sign a piece of paper that says we have no honor. You're asking us to say we're not Marines. If a court decides that what we did was wrong, then I'll accept whatever punishment they give. But I believe I was right, sir. I believe I did well, my job, and I will did. not dishonor myself, my unit, or the Corps, so that I can go home. Are you really going to let this happen to him because of a code, Harold? Do you think we were right? It doesn't matter. Do you think we were right? Thawson's going to go to jail just to spite me. Fine. If he wants to jump off a cliff, that's his business. I'm not going to hold his hand on the way down. I want to get him a new lawyer. How do I do it? Why are you so afraid to be Look. a lawyer? Were Daddy's expectations really that high? Oh, please, spare me the psychobabble father bullshit. You know how to win. You know they have a case, and you know how to win. If you walk away from this now, you've sealed their fate. Their fate was sealed the moment Santiago died. Do you believe they have a case? No. <laughs> you it wasn't. Dawson. It you was sealed the moment the they said world. no to that deal. It doesn't matter what I believe. It only matters what I can... Nothing. Good with that. Ouch. That was harsh. He just wanted to do what he thought was right. Docket number 411275 VR-5, United States versus Lance Corporal Harold W. Dawson and Private First Class Loudon Downey. The accused are charged with- Enter a plea of not guilty for the accused. We will adjourn until 10 hundred, three weeks from today, at which time this general court-martial will reconvene. We work out of my apartment every night, 7 o'clock. Joe, before you come over and I pick up a carton of legal pads, half a dozen boxes of red pens, half a dozen boxes of black pens. They're going to win this thing. Clamps. I need you to start on a preliminary Just hearing him speak and about Joe it. All the proficiency and conduct reports on Dawson Downey. You think Dawson and Downey knew it was an illegal order? It doesn't matter what they knew. Any decent human being would have refused. They're not permitted to question orders. Who was Markinson? Huh? What are the magic words? I give orders every day. Nobody. So many we names. have softball games and marching bands. They work at a place where you have to wear camouflage or you might get shot. This is our defense. Intent. No one can prove there is poison on the rag. Code red. They're common and accepted in Guantanamo Bay. The order. A. Kendrick gave it. B. They had no choice but to tent. I don't know what made Santiago die. I don't want to know. I just want to be able to show it could have been something other than poison. Joe, talk to doctors. Find out everything there is to know about lactic acidosis. He ordered me and Lance Corporal Dawson to give Willie a code red. Answers still have to come much faster. This Iowa I drew the court members this afternoon. Seven men, two women, five Navy, four Marines. All officers with line experience. Neither of the women have children, so that's a bad break. Now, these nine people are going to insist that someone be blamed for that. Ross is handing them our clients. We're going to hand them Kendrick. This is about a sales pitch. It's not going to be won by the law. It's going to be won by the lawyers. So remember, poker faces. How law Don't is. In front of the court. He has taken something seriously for once. This is real character growth. On midnight of September 6, the accused entered the barracks room of their platoon mate, PFC William Santiago. They woke him up. 
tied his arms and legs with tape before he drowned in his own blood and was pronounced dead at 37 minutes past midnight. These are the facts of the case. These are the facts of the case, and they are undisputed. He's kind of good. Without cafe. He made such a no strong case. The and there was no when Dawson and Downey went into Santiago's room that night, it wasn't because of vengeance or hatred. It wasn't to kill or harm. And it wasn't because they were looking for kicks on a Friday night. It's because it was, it's because it was what they were ordered to do. Now, out in the real world, that means nothing. And here at the Washington Navy Yard, Mr. McGuire, have you questioned Lance Corporal Dawson about the fence line shooting? Yes, he claims to have been engaged in some manner by the enemy. But you don't believe him. There was enough evidence to support such a charge. Thank you. Mr. McGuire, I don't understand what you mean. Santiago was the only eyewitness. I never had the chance to interview him, so I don't know what he saw. And now we'll never know. Yeah. Will we, Mr. McGuire? Oh, no. No. No more questions. Uh. Lieutenant Kendrick told us we had an informer in our group that Private Santiago had gone outside the chain of command and reported to the NIS on a member of our platoon. Does that make you mad? Private Santiago betrayed a code we believe in very deeply, sir. Were the other members of the squad angry? Object, speculation. Were Dawson and Downey? Please. What was the order? Sir, he said Santiago wasn't to be touched. Corporal Hammerker, are you in Dawson and Downey's barracks room five minutes after this meeting? No, sir. Thanks. Yes, I have no more questions. In light of the defense, Lieutenant Caffey is planning to mount the explicit instructions of the platoon leader seems particularly relevant testimony. The defense is willing to concede that all 22 witnesses will testify substantially as Corporal Hammerker did. If the government is willing to concede that none of them were in Dawson and Downey's room at 1620 on September 6th. All rise. They're just going to drag this on for as much as they can. Because it would be more proof, but guess what? No one likes boring, okay? The jury, they're not the entertained. Again. I think we're taking the right approach. Joe, we... Dr. Stone, what is lactic acidosis? This is the doctor. If the muscles and other cells of the body burn sugar instead of oxygen, lactic acid is produced. 20 to 30 minutes. And what caused this process to be sped up in Santiago's muscles? An ingested poison of some kind. Your Honor, we object at this point. The witness is speculating. Commander Stone is an expert medical witness, and this courtroom, his opinion is not considered speculation. Commander Stone, is Commander, is it possible <clears throat> for a person to have an affliction, some sort of condition, which might also speed up the process of acidosis? It's possible. What might some of those conditions be? If a person had a coronary disorder or cerebral disorder, the process would be more rapid. Commander, if I had a coronary condition, and a perfectly clean rag was placed in my mouth and the rag was accidentally pushed too far. It would have to be a very serious condition. Is it possible to have a serious coronary condition where the initial warning signals were so mild as to escape a physician during a routine medical exam? Possibly. There would still be symptoms, though. What kind of symptoms? There are hundreds of... Chest pains? Yes. Doctor, is this your signature? Yes, it is. This is an order for Private Santiago to be put on restricted duty. I Would personally you? give each man a thorough physical examination. Private Santiago was given a clean bill of health. That's why it had to be poison, right, Commander? You've held the license to practice medicine. I don't for see how that was an objection. Certified in internal medicine, you are chief of internal medicine at a hospital. Yeah, he has a lot to lose. That's the whole point. People. The record. In we further ask the court to instruct the court members to lend no weight to this witness's testimony. The objections are overruled, counsel. Your Honor, the defense strenuously objects. Your objection is noted. The witness is an expert, and the court will hear his opinion. Yeah, don't be all emotional about it. Dr. Stone. She just messed everything up. Just leave him to talk. Opinion. Was Willie Santiago poisoned? All right. Murphy had it covered. He was asking all the right questions. Then that bastard objected it. They didn't like him, so they killed him. And why? Because he couldn't run very fast. All right, all right. Everybody, take the night off. Why are you always giving me your resume? Because she feels like she always has to prove herself. Lawyer. Because no, she's a woman. No, you don't. 
I think you're an exceptional lawyer. I see you convincing them, and I think Dawson and Downey are going to end up owing their lives to you. Joe, I think... I see that, too. I think you should prepare yourself for the fact that we're going to lose. Ross's opening statement, it was all true. We were doing seven-man assault drills, and my weapon slipped. It was just because it was over 100 degrees, and my palms were sweaty, and I'd forgotten to use the resin like we were taught. What was Private Santiago ever late for platoon meetings? Yes, sir. Was his barracks ever in disorder? Yes, sir. Did he ever fall back on a run? All the time, sir. Did he ever? You got a code red because your palms were sweaty. Why didn't Santiago, this burden to his unit, ever get one? Dawson wouldn't allow it, sir. Is there no book, no manual or pamphlet, no set of orders or regulations that lets me know that as a Marine, one of my duties is to perform code reds? No, sir. No book, sir. No further questions. What? Corporal, would you turn to the page in this book that says where the mess hall is? How did you know where the mess hall was if it's not in this book? <laughs> Good. Well, I guess I just followed the crowd at chow time, sir. Good. No more questions. Ooh, even a, a in there, stronger that. statement. You, just follow the crowd. That's what everyone does, you know, Code Reds, cafeteria. Seven and night, we'll do a final Kendrick review. I want to That was dunk this such guy. a good session. Mm-mm-mm. He makes a fine lawyer. Oh, Jesus Christ! You left the door That looks locked. like a serial killer. You scared the shit out of me. Just if there was something I could That's do him. about that, I would. But since I can't, all I can do is help you, Lieutenant. What do you know? I know everything. Was it a code red? Jessup was going to keep him on the base. He said he wanted him trained. You've got the transport. It's got your signature. Yeah, I know. I signed him the morning you arrived in Cuba, five days after Santiago died. How are you going to prove any of this? He's not going to stand gonna in court. I'm going to get you a deal, some kind of immunity with the prosecutor. In about four days, you're going to appear. I want you to know that I'm proud neither of what I have done nor of what I am doing. Where is he? The downtown what? lodge in Northeast. I want him guarded. That's probably a good idea. My clearance code is 411 Thank you. I don't have a We're going to win. Joe, don't get crazy about this. We don't know who Markinson is. We don't know what the logbook's going to say. You just concentrate on Downey. I'm going to talk to Ross and tell him where we are. In the meantime, I'm going to put the Apostle John Kendrick on the stand. See if He's, like, assisting him. him. All right. I have an obligation to tell you that you accuse Kendrick or Jessup of any crime. And I want to tell you that I think the whole fucking bunch of you are certifiably insane. This code of honor of yours makes me want to beat the shit out of something. Don't you dare lump me in with Jessup and Kendrick just because we wear the same uniform. Now, I want you to acknowledge that the judge advocate has made you aware of the possible consequences involved in accusing a Marine officer of a felony without proper evidence. Lieutenant, you signed three proficiency in conduct reports on Santiago. and all three reports, you indicated a rating of below average. I did not see the need to trample on a man's grave. Well, we appreciate that, but you're under oath now, and I think unpleasant as it may be, we'd all just soon hear the truth. I have many men in my charge, Lieutenant. I write many reports. Lieutenant, do you recall an incident involving a PFC Curtis Bell who'd been found stealing liquor from the officers' club? Yes, I do. Did you report Private Bell to proper authorities? I have two books at my bedside, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, do you know what a code red is? Yes, I do. Have you ever ordered a code red? No, I have not. Lieutenant, did you order Dawson and two other men to make sure the price his health in danger? Yeah, I'm sure going lonely, without I food. Know. But you did order the barracks restriction, didn't you? You did order the denial of food. Yes, I did. Wouldn't this form of discipline be considered a code red? No. If I called the other 407... What crime did he commit? Lieutenant Kendrick, Dawson brought a hungry guy some food. He disobeyed an order. And because he did, because he exercised his own set of values, because he made a decision about the welfare of a Marine that was in conflict with an order of yours, can Dawson determine on his own which orders he's going to follow? No, he cannot. A lesson he learned after the Curtis Bell incident, am I right? I would think so. Code you know. I specifically ordered those men- Is it reasonable to, to think you would have disobeyed you again? Lieutenant, don't answer that. You don't have to, I'm through. 
Lieutenant Kendrick. There was no flight at 11 o'clock. What the fuck are you trying to pull? The first flight stateside left Guantanamo Bay at 2300. It arrived at Then why isn't it listed in the Tower Chief's log? Tower Chief's in on it too. Wasn't that Wait, grand conspiracy? It's a logbook? Well, maybe he can make it so a plane didn't take off, but I can sure as hell prove that one landed. I'll get the logbook from Andrews. We'll put Marcus in on the stand and we'll deal with Jessup's refusal to transfer Santiago and he'll testify to the Ford's transfer and that'll be enough. That and Downey's testimony really ought to be enough. I was ordered to give him a code read by the platoon commander of Rifle Security Company Windward, Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick. You're gonna do fine. I was William's executive officer. I knew your son vaguely, which is to say I knew his name. In a matter of time, the trial of the two men charged with your son's death will be concluded, and seven men and two women whom you've never met will try to offer you an explanation as to why William is dead. For my part, I've done as much as I can to bring you truth. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Andrew Markinson, <gasps> United States Marine Corps. Brian, I want you to tell us one last time. Why did you go to Private Santiago's room on the night of September 6th? Oh my God! Because he knows there's no the code way red out. Code ordered by my platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan James. About 10, 15 minutes, sir. You ever had to walk it? Yes, sir. That day, sir. Friday, the pickup, Private. That. Now you've said that your assault on Private Santiago was a result of an order that Lieutenant Kendrick gave you in your barracks room. How could you be in your room at 1620? Sir, there, there was a blowout. Private. Hal. Don't look at him. Hal. Private, answer the captain's question. Are you drunk? No. Pretty much. No. <laughs> yeah. I'll put on a pot of coffee. We've got a long night's work ahead. I still think we can win. Maybe you should drink a little. <laughs> Look, we'll, we'll go delusional the there. Morning and we'll make a motion for a continuum. No. Just hear me no, out. I won't listen and I won't hear you out. Your passion is compelling, Joe. It's also useless. Loudon Downey needed a trial lawyer today. I think my father would have enjoyed seeing me graduate from law school. I think he would have liked that an awful lot. He misses his dad. Did I ever tell you I wrote a paper about your father in college? Joe, get in the car. Joanne, please get in the car. Look. Joanne! Joanne! I'm gonna put Jets up on the stand! You crazy bastard. Jessup told Kendrick to order the code red. Kendrick did, and our clients followed the order. The cover up is in our case. To win, Jessup needs to tell the court members that he ordered the code red. So now you think you can get him to just say it? I think he wants to say it. I think he's pissed off that he's got to hide from us. I think he wants to say that he made a command decision and right now he's dying. That's a good plan, but that's this guy that's is smart. The that's the plan. How are you going to do it? I have no idea. I need my bat. Stay here. I'm going to the office for a while. The uniforms. Phone calls. Where's Sam? He's on his way. Did he get the guys? Yeah. Listen, uh, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure. When you're out there today, if you feel like it's not going to happen, you feel like he's not going to say it. Don't go for it. You could get in trouble. Yeah, no Especially shit. That's what he said. Affairs, and I'm telling you, you could get in a lot of trouble. If you think you can't get him. Yeah. But now she cares about it. All rise. Defense calls Colonel Nathan Jessup. He looks mildly irritated and offended to be there today. Well, what did you think? You were gonna just strut along? Colonel, when you learned of Santiago's letter to the NIS, you had a meeting with your two senior officers. Is that right? 
Yes. Objection. I'd like to know just what the defense counsel is implying. Um, they'll get I'm there. Simply that at present, Colonel Markinson is not alive. Well, sure. We thank you for bringing this to our attention. Move You're on, welcome, Lieutenant. Judge. Yes, sir. He doesn't like him. Colonel, he has prejudice. You gave Lieutenant Kendrick Did you order. give an order to Colonel Markinson as well? I ordered Markinson to have Santiago transferred off the base immediately. Why? See, he is a, he's the bad order. guy, obviously, you, but he's so likable. Come on, right? Be on a flight, I can't be the only one here. Is that, did you wear that uniform on the plane? Please, Accord, is this dialogue relevant to anything? The defense didn't have an opportunity to depose this witness, Your Honor. I'd ask the court for a little latitude. You better get somewhere fast with this, Lieutenant. Well, yes, he's interested, Colonel? though. He is interested in what he has to say. I brought a change of clothes <laughs> and some personal items. <laughs> all right, all right, let's see. Let's see. I'm After curious, After Dawson and Downey's arrest on the night of the 6th, Santiago's barracks room was sealed off. T-shirts, two Please, Accord, is there a question anywhere in our future? Shut Lieutenant up! Lieutenant Cassidy, I have to ask Bro, you I know what question. he's getting at. I know what he's getting Santiago at. I'm Santiago was impacked. Yes! 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 We'll get back to that one in a minute. <laughs> This is a record of all telephone calls made from your base in the past 24 Nailed hours. Nailed it, right Canada there. Washington, you made three calls and highlighted those calls in yellow. The second call was to arrange a meeting with Congressman Richmond of the House Armed Services Committee. And the third call was to my sister, Elizabeth. Why did you make that call, sir? You were leaving for one day. You packed a bag and made three phone calls. Santiago was leaving for the rest of his life. <laughs> And he hadn't called a soul. Damn! And he Damn! Thing. Oh, that's so good. Can you explain that? Overruled. Your Honor. Your objection is noted. Even he knows. Pardon? Yes, he's making sense. My answer is I don't have the first damn clue. Maybe he was an early riser and liked to pack in the morning. And maybe he didn't have any friends. What I do know is that he was set to leave the base at 0600. Damn. Now, Unshaken. are these really the Shaken. questions that I was called here to answer? Phone calls and foot lockers? Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. Oh, damn. These two Marines are on trial for their lives. I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've There we it. go. He's starting Defense Plan B, getting under his skin. Or sir. Yes. I don't know what the hell kind of unit you're running here? The yes, witness yes, will yes, address yes. this court as Judge or Your Honor. <laughs> I'm quite certain. <laughs> Everyone's on eggshells right Come. now. What do you want to discuss now? My favorite color? <laughs> Your Honor, these are the Tower Chief's logs for both Guantanamo Bay and Andrews Air Force Base. Guantanamo log lists no flight that left at 11 p.m. and the Andrews log lists no flight that landed at This two. is ridiculous. Colonel, a moment ago, check the tower logs for Christ's sake. Mm. Well, we'll get to the airman in just a minute, sir. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick ignored the order? Ignored the order? Any chance he forgot about it? No. You ever served in an infantry unit, son? No, sir. Ever served in a forward area? There no, we sir. go, there we go. Ever put Are we clear? Oh, uh, he's displaying authority. There we go. You got him right in the bear trap. Well, I have just one more question before I call Airman O'Malley and Airman Rodriguez. And he does this where he follows two if you gave separate things Santiago at the same time. And your orders are always followed. You said he was being transferred because he was in grave danger. That's correct. You said I... he was in danger. I said grave danger. You said, is there I any recall other... what I, I said. I can have the court reporter read back to you. Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No, sir. You made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters in their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. So Santiago shouldn't have been in any danger at all. Should he have, Colonel? You snotty little bastard. Everyone's You're quiet, like an answer, though. Recess. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. The court will wait for an answer. Yes! Yes, the judge is turning. Even it's turning around. Santiago wasn't to be touched. And why did he have to be transferred? Did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You to. want answers? I Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? We use words like honor, code, Loyalty. 
Who code? use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending Provided. something. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! I mean, I feel sorry for him because I also, like, see where he's coming Please from. Please, the court. I suggest the members be dismissed so that we can move to an but immediate Article 39A a session. The witness has rights. Captain Ross. The members of the court will retire to an ante room until further instructed. Speechless. Speechless. Damn! What the hell is this? MPs, guard the colonel. Yes, sir. Look, I know where he's coming from, though. Captain like, Ross. They the need this? people yes, like this. They the right need to them to be silent. stern, but he's kind he's of... I'm being charged with a crime. I don't know. I don't know. Is, don't know. is it because I... Like, I'm being charged with a crime? I'm going to rip the eyes out of your head and piss in your dead skull. You fucked with the wrong Marine. Colonel Jessup, do you understand these rights as I've just read them to you? I'm a lawyer and an officer in the United States Navy. And you're under arrest, you son of a bitch. But that feels so good, is, is the moment. Because <laughs> he's an asshole, you know, but he's doing a job. Who else is going to do that job? Better than him? Maybe, maybe better than him. Maybe he's just an asshole. Maybe I'm just biased. Charge of murder. The members find the accused. Don't tell me. Guilty. guilty. Oh, fuck. Okay. On the charge of conspiracy to commit murder. The members find the accused. No, they're gonna not win. Guilty. They're gonna win. I just thought for a second that maybe they like. On the charge of bribed? conduct unbecoming a United States Marine, guilty as charged. Wait. So it. The accused are hereby sentenced to time already served, and you are ordered to be dishonorably discharged oh, no. from the Marine Corps. Court martial is adjourned. No, that's just All bullshit. Right. I don't understand. Well, Colonel Jessup said he ordered the code red. I know. I Colonel know. Jessup said he ordered the code red. What did we do wrong? It's not that simple. What did we do wrong? We did nothing wrong. Yeah, we did. You don't need to wear a patch in your arm to have honor. Ten hut! <laughs> There's an officer on deck. Damn good job, though. Damn good job. <sighs> That's the best lawyer work I've seen ever represented in a movie or a TV show. And I've watched all of Suits. This is the best lawyer work that I've seen. This is insane. Just shows you the lengths that Tom Cruise is going to go. I was not expecting this to be like a lawyer's thing. I was, I don't know, because, you know, Tom Cruise in back in the olden days, he was doing like more of um, classic things. And I didn't think that lawyers were like a part of that. But like, he's a lawyer here and a damn good one. And yeah, it, it was just like the build. And it was mostly about lawyership lawyerism yeah uh it was mostly about that because most of the uh, scenes on, in the court they were like longer than the other ones the other ones were kind of just felt like a build-up to that you know everything was building for the court case to unravel and like cafe the character he grew so much from the beginning like i feel like we saw some like personal growth in him throughout this story you know which is crazy because like it's been what a few days and he just completely transformed he started taking things seriously he wasn't just joking around he was more serious more committed more respectful more determined everything like it just seemed like his life was falling like the pieces were just 
merging together and it was all like building up to this climax of him winning this case which was like because he'd never taken anything to court before this was like so huge like he had to fight not just bargain you know like he had to actually fight for someone really good like it was building to this climax and the climax was perfect it was just like if you're paying attention throughout the whole movie the climax is just it's not just a single point it was kind of like dragged on but not in a bad way like dragged dragged is a bad word but um it was a big deal you know it was it was good it felt really good and even the like the bad guy i don't remember his name in the movie but jack nicholson's character he was i had some sort of duality about him because the whole time i kept thinking like i know this is the good guy uh the bad guy i know this is the bad guy but I can't help but like relate to him or not relate but understand where he's coming from but maybe that's just I don't know bias so let me know what you think in the comments and leave a like if you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one take care bye bye salute to you